Sometimes when you use the magic wand, you end up with these really jagged edges or pixelations along the way. Now, if you choose a fuzzy eraser, as I have, then sometimes as you go along, it will sort of blend it out. And so it's not quite so jagged edges. Another way to do the same thing, and you can see here I've got some pretty significant issues right here. So I'll just erase those out. Another way to accomplish this, a similar thing is with the blur tool. Now I'm still trying to get rid of some of the white around here. So I really want to erase the white before I come up with the blue blur. But once I've erased all the white, so there's no glow, I don't, I don't want to, to create a glow around her. But there is a lovely little blur tool and it looks like this water drop right here. And if I click on it, you'll notice it's actually the blur sharpen tool. So there are two sides um, of the same coin and down at the bottom, you'll notice the blur is the default. And if you want to uh, sharpen an image, you can choose the other one. I'm going to choose blur. And instead of uh, blurring the whole picture, it's just going to blur inside this area of the circle. And if I choose the fuzzy brush, it's only going to blur in a fuzzy kind of way, especially right around where my mouse is and not so much anywhere else. So I'm just gently going to go along the edge here and see if you can see what the difference is. Now it's possible that you can't. So in that case, I don't know if you've ever seen the undo history before. It's right here. I'm just going to get rid of some of this uh, convolving. Apparently that's what it's called. We'll go back to the step before that. Okay. So we'll pretend I've never blurred before. Let's get rid of that because it's just difficult to watch. We'll pretend I haven't blurred before and I'm just going to really quickly create a new layer. Um, and I'm going to uh, make it a very bizarre um, color and I'll put that layer in the background and I'll just make a randomly purple layer just so you can see what's going on. Oh, sorry. I've got the bucket fill that. <laughs> did I really? Yes, I did. I made the purple in the background. Hey, it's a lovely chance for you to stop and talk about foreground and background colors. So let's try this again. Put the purple into the foreground. Yes, there it is. And bucket fill it. There we go. So now that you've, I've chosen a really, really horrible color that we're definitely not going to use, you can see there's little places where I've missed on the eraser. So I'll just go back and touch those up now, making sure I'm on the right layer and then go back and erase those. But you can also see where there's pixelation. Okay. And this was really the whole point. See this edge of the ear. That's horrible. That's just not going to cut it when we're doing um, Photoshopping. So what we want to do is we want to choose the blur tool. Now, again, we're only going to work on this layer. And so on this layer, I'm not going to be affecting the purple. I'm not going to be merging with the purple. There's no, it, the computer, as far as it knows, only has this layer to deal with. And so as I blur, you'll see that the pixelation or the hard edges that were here are slowly getting blurred away. Now it's not perfect because there's still pixels underneath. However, as I just keep going now, right now, I know most students want to do this giant click and drag and drag and drag and drag and drag. But what I'm doing is a click and drag and let go, click, drag and let go, click, drag and let go, click, drag and let go. And so each time I click and drag and let go, it's doing a gentle level of blur around where I'm clicking and dragging. And I hope that makes at least a little bit of sense. Now you shouldn't do this too much. If you end up with an ear that looks like it's fading away, like it's ghosting or something, then that's definitely too much. If you end up with hair that looks like it's fading away, that's not what you're looking for. You don't want to fade the edges because that definitely will look like it's been Photoshopped. Now in the final version of this, I don't want this purple. So I'm definitely going to either make it invisible or erase it later on. But for right now, having a purple layer or some other really hideous color that makes every all the edges just really obvious. Oh, do you see how I'm, nothing's happening here? Yes, I'm on the wrong layer. Go back to this layer. Now blur the edge. Ah, there we go. Changes are happening. Okay, so just go right around the entire edge 
making sure you do a little bit of blur, but not too much. If you do too much blur, there's a couple of different choices for you. So let's say I blur this really horribly. Okay, that is horribly blurred. And if I zoom back out to 100%, come down here, choose 100%. You can see that that's just, there's, it's unnaturally fuzzy over here. So if that happens, let me just zoom back in. Uh, I think I was at 400% last time. So let's just go back to 400% and I'll zoom over. If that happens, why not, while I'm at it, try out the sharpen tool. So let's go to the sharpen tool and I'll just push back in and push it in, push it in. All right, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is just to pretend we were never here. And that's with the eraser and just simply erase the fuzzy parts. Okay. Now you'll end up actually ending up creating a new picture. That's another way to work it. Okay. Or for those of you that get really frustrated, you can just start over, but I'm not at that point yet. I'd much rather just do small changes and then come back and blur it properly again. Click and drag with the blur, click and drag with the blur. There we go. Little bits of blur, not crazy amounts of blur. So I hope that gives you some tips on how to deal with the edges of amber and come back in just a second and we'll get on to the next stage.